Welcome, everyone. We're so glad you can join us for this on-demand webinar hosted by JFL Total Wealth Management. Today's session is part of a multi-part series called Laying Your Financial Foundation, where we review the important fundamentals for saving and spending when you are in your 20s and 30s, and demonstrate how your financial success will depend on more than just a good income. Today we are reviewing estate planning documents, including wills, power of attorney, and medical directives. Many people incorrectly believe that having legal documents is only for the wealthy or middle-aged, that actually they're incredibly important as soon as you become a legal adult at age 18. Today we will review what estate planning documents you need to prioritize, how to obtain them, and what to consider when drafting them. While each of your financial situations are unique, there are certain foundations, including estate planning, you all need in order to start the path to financial success. If you have any questions at the end of the presentation, please contact our office. We also highly recommend checking our webinar library at jfltotalwealth.net forward slash webinars for additional installments of our Laying Your Founda Financial Foundation series. We review budgeting, saving for retirement, managing student loans and other debt, insurance protection, and how much you can expect to pay for big expenses like your first house. You can also download copies of these presentations on our website. Without further ado, let's introduce today's speaker. Jeannie Kane has an MBA from Duke University and is a certified financial planner. She has extensive experience with analyzing and managing our private clients' portfolios and with developing comprehensive financial plans. She has a 20-year-old son and a daughter headed to college this fall. Welcome, everyone. I'm excited today to talk to you about estate planning and the documents that are important for you. We know that each of you has a personal view of what success might look like for you as you get older, have families of your own, and reach career milestones. Our goal during this series is to provide you with the background on the topics listed here so you have the foundations for financial security at every stage of your life. Today we are talking about protecting yourself and your family with estate planning documents. Jeannie, take it away. Thanks, Gretchen. Given today's coronavirus pandemic, it's more important than ever to make sure your estate planning documents are in place should anything happen to you. Every adult, no matter the age, needs to have these five key documents in place. The first is the medical release. This is also known as a HIPAA form. This gives healthcare professionals permission to share your medical information with others. The next would be the advanced medical directive. This is also known as a living will. This lists your wishes regarding life-sustaining treatment. Do you want to be put on life support or not? Would you want to have a feeding tube or not? So these things aren't really comfortable to think about on a regular basis, but are important to think about because you want to make sure if you're ever in that situation that your wants and your wishes are what happens. And it's, if your family doesn't know what your wants and wishes are, it becomes incredibly hard to make sure that they're doing what you want them to do. So having this living will and the advanced medical directive is important to have in place. The powers of attorney are the next set of documents. These are legal documents that give one person the power to act for another, and they're two different types. The first is the medical power of attorney. This allows someone else to make the medical decisions on your behalf if you're not able to do so. You may be surprised that if you get in a car accident that your parents or your spouse they aren't automatically the person who'll be able to make those medical decisions for you. Um, you need to have the medical power of attorney in place in order for that to happen. The next type of power of attorney is the general power of attorney, and this helps address financial decisions for you. So this would be, again, where you designated someone to be able to, really, they're able to do all the things that you can do. So this person who has your general power of attorney could, you know, open up a bank account or take money out of your bank account. They could sign a lease for you. They could sell stock that you have for money that you may need. So it's again important that should something happen to you and you're not able to make these decisions for yourself that you have someone able there to do, to do that for you. And that's where the general power of attorney comes in play. And then finally, looking at the will. Now this is the document that gives you the power to decide what happens to your possessions. And if you happen to have children, this is where you identify the guardians of your children. Again, who's going to be taking care of them if something happens to you. Let's talk next about two different documents that are ones that you should consider. Now, the first is a prenuptial agreement. 
prenups set expectations for how to divide assets if you get divorced. No one ever walks into a marriage thinking that you're going to get divorced. You're in love. You know, that's not going to happen to us. You know, we love each other too much. Well, the reality is one half of all marriages end in divorce. You may be surprised that your 401k, that dream car that you just bought, and even your bank account, those are all assets that can be divided as part of a divorce settlement. Now, prenups may not be romantic to talk about, not romantic to bring up, but most couples would benefit from having one. Millennials are more likely than any other generation to start having prenuptial agreements. And that's because the generation tends to get married later in life. And doing so brings more assets to the table as well as more debts. The next document that's important to, to consider would be a revocable trust. This is also known as a living trust. And this document also is a, is a way to identify how your assets would be distributed should something happen to you. And it allows you to make changes to the terms while you're alive. So you can add in, you know, as you get home, you can add that into the trust. If you want to have a, you know, someone, like maybe you have a new beneficiary, you can add that, you can take things out. Really, you can make changes to the terms. But when you die, those terms are set in stone. Now, the trust had the added benefit of avoiding probate court. Now, probate court is what happens when you die and your will gets taken to court to be validated. They show that it's true and it can be time consuming and it also can be very expensive. So if you can have assets pass to your beneficiaries outside of going through probate court, it's a great way to save time and money. Now we recommend that you review and update your estate documents every four years or more often if you've had a significant life event. And a significant life event would be a change like if you got married, if you got divorced, or if you had a child. You're going to need to make sure that if your, change, your needs are going to change over time, and you're going to want to make sure that your documents keep up with your current needs. So what happens to your assets when you die? Well, the answer is kind of depends. And that's because there are different ways that assets transfer from you to your beneficiaries. There are assets that automatic, automatically transfer through something called a beneficiary designation. These transfer through accounts, through retirement accounts, which would be your 401k, your IRA, a Roth IRA, et cetera, and also through insurance policies. And in these types of accounts, you identify a person or persons when you set up the account to get the benefit, the assets, or you know, the death benefit when you die. If there's one thing you can do today after watching this webinar, what we want you to do is to go out and review and update your beneficiaries. If this is particularly important, particularly important if you've been divorced, if you're married, or if you have a child. You'd be surprised at the number of new clients that will walk into our office, and when we do a beneficiary review, we look at the accounts and they were divorced many years ago, and they're shocked to learn that if something happened to them today, that their former spouse is the beneficiary of their Roth IRA or of their 401k. It's something that that's not what you want. You want to make sure that you keep everything up to date. Now for non-retirement non accounts and other assets, they can transfer through account titling or through a will. With account titling, titling there are certain types of non-retirement accounts where you can designate who gets the account if you die. The joint tenants with rights of survivorship is a common joint account for married couples. Now if one spouse dies, the other spouse automatically becomes the owner of that account. Transfer on death account is a type of individual, the individual's owned brokerage account. And here, again, the individual owner can designate someone to be the new owner on the account should something happen to them. Now for your will, this is another way that assets or your possessions transfer to someone else. And this is again where you decide where, if you have an account that doesn't have a beneficiary, it's going to pass through the will. So if you just happen to have a brokerage account or you have a bank account, um, if you die, the will is going to determine where those assets go. So what happens if you don't have a will? So if you don't have a will, the state law is going to determine what happens to all of your possessions and to all of your assets. I live in the state of New Jersey. And there is no way that I would want the state of New Jersey to decide what happens to my stuff. 
The concern here is that you have no control where your money and your assets may go, and it may end up where you don't want it to go. For example, say you have three siblings, two of them you love dearly, one you haven't talked to in 20 years. If you don't have a will, the state may decide that they're gonna split all of your stuff equally between your three siblings, and that may not be what you want them to do. Let's talk next about um, you know, how you go about getting your documents prepared. You know, it's important you now understand the importance of it, but let's see kind of where you go. So say you're single new or newly married and you know, don't own any property. You know, for the basics, you can get some really good basic uh, documents through just going online. Rocketlawyer.com or LegalZoom.com, those types of online uh, services can provide some relatively inexpensive but basic documents and standard documents to get you started. But if you have more complex needs, maybe you have a family or you bought a home or maybe you even own property or own a business with someone else, you know, in these situations, you want to talk to an attorney who's who specializes in estate planning and have them help you prepare your documents in those situations. And there's some other examples of other complex needs as well. Maybe you're living with someone and you're in a long-term relationship. It may be more important than ever for you to have estate documents in place because your partner may not be the person who would get your assets or not be the person that could make medical decisions for you. And what happens if you're anticipating you know, an inheritance? You may want to make sure that that money is protected from creditors and a, tr a trust can do that for you and a state planner and a state planning attorney can help you with that as well. And then finally, if you own joint property with someone else, do you know what's going to happen to that property if you or the partner in the property, if either of you die? So let's go ahead and recap what we've talked about today. There are five key documents um, that you'll need to have that relate to estate planning. Um, the first of these is the medical directive, and that's the living will. The second would be your medical power of attorney, the third general power or your financial power of attorney, your medical release, and your will. All five of these documents are really important for you to have in place. Again, this is not for the rich and famous. This is for anyone who's an adult at age 18 or older needs to get these in place. The second thing that we want to make sure that you remember to do is to update your estate planning documents at least every four years and more often if you have a life-changing event. And the next big takeaway would be to make sure that you update your beneficiary designations. Again, this is relatively easy to do, but to go through all of your accounts and make sure that the people who are designated to get your, your accounts and your assets, they're the people that you want them to, to be. Now, in kind of a recap of all of the best practices that we want to talk to you about throughout the series that we're doing, the kind of five, five key things we want you to do. You know, the first is to live below your means. You know, developing good spending habits and savings habits now, this is really going to benefit you for the rest of your life and for your retirement. And secondly, you know, we know that you're just starting out and you know, you're going to be excited when you get a raise or you get that bonus. You know, take the time, celebrate, take part of the money that you get and, and, and enjoy that. But take another chunk, maybe split it 50-50 and put that additional money into savings. Put it into your, into your 401k, into your emergency fund. Build those up so that you're going to be able to kind of, as your income grows, your savings will grow as well. Third thing to look at is automation. And if we could tell you to automate, automate, automate. It makes it so easy to save if you have money automatically coming out of your paycheck and going into your 401k, automatically coming out of your paycheck and going into your emergency fund or going into your savings account, you don't even have to think about it and you're already doing the savings. It's a really good thing to do. And next, we want to make sure that you review your insurance needs. We want to make sure that you have adequate levels of insurance and the appropriate types of policies to protect you and your family. And then finally, let's talk about the Roth types of accounts. So it's the Roth IRA or Roth 401k. These are tax, these are after tax retirement savings accounts. And you, for these types of accounts, you put your money in after you pay taxes on it and it grows tax free for the rest of your life. Now, the key thing here is that you're in the lowest tax bracket, most likely lowest tax bracket of your entire life. 
So you pay the taxes now, you don't have to worry about the taxes ever again. They're a really, really powerful tool and you should take advantage of them. So I wanted to thank you again today for taking the time to sit and listen to, as I talked about estate planning uh, for folks that are in their 20s and 30s. Thank you. Thanks, Jeannie, for that great advice about protecting yourself and your family with estate planning documents. If you have any questions or would like to speak with Jeannie about your personal financial situation, please contact our office. And be sure to visit our website where you can view other key topics for laying your financial foundation. Thanks very much.